Hello everyone, and welcome to this new video tutorial for Maverick Render. This time we will explore the most recent improvements we've made to our bloom and glare system. We'll use this very simple scene with a spherical light to cleanly see what the new features do. Enabling bloom and glare in the lens tab of the tone map panel we will see new controls for temperature. These controls will allow you to artistically control the overall hue of bloom and glare. The next new feature is the dirt map, with which you can simulate dust and speckles stuck to the glass of the lens. In the shading area of the library, under maps, we will find a new section with lens maps. There are a bunch of good dirt maps, mostly based on images with heavy bokeh. As you can see, the dirt map only affects the areas of the image where there is bloom or glare spread. We can increase the bloom and glare intensity or the light power to better appreciate the effect. Let's try some more maps. The dirt map can contribute some realistic irregularities to your renders. Let's now try the new aperture map, with which you can override the camera aperture and give glare a custom shape. Let's try with some maps from our library. It is generally a good idea to adjust the fringe slider, which controls the amount of chromatic diffraction. A plethora of different effects can be achieved with aperture maps. Let's try some more maps and parameter values. These maps here are based on procedural gradients and are ideal to produce custom shapes. Playing with all the parameters you can find creative looking diffraction patterns. Another new feature is the obstacle map which can be used to simulate lens scratches or defects. Again, let's try some maps from the library. Let's try some more maps. Finally, the new pattern map provides a way to manually override physically correct diffraction. The glare pattern procedural node comes packed with many interesting parameters you can play with. The library comes with some pre-configured procedural glare maps. The ringing and fringe attributes can be combined to scale or chromatically smear the glare pattern. We will go through a couple of real examples now to illustrate what these new functionalities can do. Here's a light bulb with its filament modeled as real geometry. If we enable bloom and glare, we will see how these affect the whole image, while we may want to constrain the effect on the filament. To achieve this, we must use Maverick's HDR remap. Let's enable low end and then show clipping to reveal a mask of what areas bloom and glare will operate on. Let's increase the cutoff and multiplier values to isolate the high brightness areas of the image. Then in high end we will do the same until everything is out of the mask except for the filament. Now we can turn show clipping off and use the multiplier to give more power to the region we just isolated. Let's drop an obstacle map from the library.
Do not forget to enable fringe for a more realistic look. Let's try some maps to produce different glare patterns. Let's also try a dirt map. Increasing its strength we will see some specks here and they're adding irregularity to the image. In the next example we will see how to isolate the spotlight at the back and the bike's headlight. We will use the same approach with the HDR remap feature. We will increase the headlight's power so it survives the HDR remap threshold. Let's try some dirt maps. You can adjust the UVs of the dirt map so it adapts to your image's aspect ratio. Now let's try an aperture map. Let's enable fringe and find a strength we like. We shall try some more maps and values until we are happy with the final result. Playing with the glare system is always great fun. We hope that you will enjoy it. This is all for now. See you in the next video. Have fun rendering with Maverick.